made a lot better. Unique Splendor abilities for their Andalusi and is actually Tangri, and they are the Sus, who is actually independent. Yay for the independent Sus. Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we are doing a mod review for the mod called 1356. But before this video begins, don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. Did you know that about 83% of you are not subscribed to me? How could you? Yet you're still watching my videos. So why don't you do us both a favor and subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to hit 5,000 subscribers before the end of summer. With that out of the way, let's jump into the mod. This mod called 1356 is basically an extended timeline mod. I've actually been asked to review this mod quite a few times by a lot of different people even a few months back. However, I was waiting until it got updated to 1.35 as back then this mod was still in the very early stages of being in beta. It was in a public beta, but now it has been fully released to the public and is fully compatible with 1.35 and Dominion update. As you can probably see just from the map as we're looking here, this mod adds a heck of a lot of content. It adds so many new tags. It adds new religions, new cultures, and is an alt history mod based largely around the fact that Frederick Barbarossa did not die. He did not drown in the river like he did in real life. This mod assumes that he was able to continue to live his life and essentially rule for a lot longer than he did in real life. So as you can see, the map is different from how it was historically. Along with the map, you also get brand new idea groups. So I'll go ahead and start out by just showing you these brand new idea groups. So to start with, as you can see, we have not only brand new idea groups that don't exist in base game EU4, you actually have existing idea groups which have been updated and made a lot better. So I'm just going to let you all look here and one of the things right off the bat that has been added is Erdowite ideas, domination ideas, which is cool as this is kind of named the same thing as the DLC. You have port ideas and you have infrastructure ideas, but those are not new. Those just come from the DLC. You also have some other ones here such as settlement ideas, which is basically largely based around settling your colonies. You also have changes to religious ideas with Deus Volt, the Deus Volt CB coming a lot earlier than it does in the base game. Over here, you have professional ideas and you also have a much more significant buff and one of my favorites to defensive ideas. Defensive ideas in base game E4 are actually terrible. They're not good at all. However, this actually makes them really good, especially this minus 10% shock damage received at the start here. This is what you'll be using as early early game, shock damage is really important. But as you get down further down into the game in EU4, it becomes fire damage, which is quite important and is what is going to do most of the damage to your troops. And this mod really takes into account that whole evolution of battles in EU4. I'm not going to read over everything that has been added as this would probably take about 10 minutes just in and of itself. However, I will point out humanist ideas. Look at this. Humanist ideas are actually a lot better in this mod as you have tolerance for the last one, which Heretic and Heathen Promises do not give any penalties. Do you know how amazing that would be as a horde? As let's say any one of these hordes, not just Yuan, any one of these big or small hordes, this would be absolutely amazing. Even just ideas in base game E4, in my opinion, are meh. They're okay. They're not the best, but they're also not the worst. They're typically really good for hordes as you have to deal with so many different cultures and so many different religions. However, this really overhauls it. So that is really cool. Another thing that this mod has added is a new age, that being the age of feudalism. As you can see, you have some lovely artwork and you have these brand new splendor abilities. So you have, of course, Feudal de Jure Law, you have Scholarly Studies, you have a Feudal Contract, you have Cavalry Supremacy, very nice. You have Mercenary Bands, you have this, you have Restructured Governorship, you have unique splendor abilities for different nations such as the Timurids, you have this here, which is very handy, you have this, the Celestial Mandate, and you have this right here. As I mentioned before, a lot of the things that have changed this mod is, of course, the map, but also the most exciting thing, in my opinion, is the religions. So as you can see, stuff in Central Europe is basically the same. You just have the nice Catholics and things like that. In North Africa, you have, of course, the Sunnis, the Abadis. However, you do have this one Catholic province, which I'll go ahead and show is owned by Carthage. We're actually a monastic order, which is really cool. You can restore Carthage, but this time as a Catholic monastic order. So basically knights. That's really amazing. In Egypt, you actually have Coptics, and this is how it was historically. And although this is an alt history mod, I do believe that by this point in history, you actually had a lot of Coptics 
Coptics still alive in Egypt and were the majority religion, although they were surrounded by Sunnis. And of course, over here, you have the lovely Catholic provinces here, as they are currently under the rule of Jerusalem, Tripolis, and Antioch, of course, as we know and love. And of course, in this part, you have the Coptic and you have the Orthodox, as well as some of the Shia provinces, like you do have in the base game, although this is normally not Coptic, which is really interesting to see. However, the one that is the most interesting to me, and I'm sure is probably very interesting to you, is actually the prevalence of Nestorians. You actually have Assyria as a state that exists, and they are Nestorian. As you can see, the Nestorian religion gives you minus two national unrest and plus two max primitive cultures, which is interesting modifiers. National unrest is fine. The max primitive cultures is interesting. I don't really know what that's trying to touch on. However, that's still really cool, and I love when mods add other religions such as this, especially other Christian religions such as Nestoria. As you can see, although Assyria is the only Nestorian nation at the start of the game, there are some other Nestorian provinces. You can see over here in Central Asia, you actually have a couple Nestorian provinces over here, as well as, of course, the lovely Hindu provinces who are somewhat ruled over by the Muslim Sultanate such as Bahmanis and these other nations. And going even further east, you actually have, of course, as we know, the Confucians and the other Buddhists, as well as the Tangri provinces, the Hindus, the various other animist religions that exist in the base community E4. It doesn't really look like too much in Africa was changed by these mods, although you do have some of the Mayas and the animists, of course, that we all know from a base game E4. Now, looking at the map, this is where things can become very, very cool and very interesting. So to start, we're going to go ahead and look at Iberia. As you can see, Iberia is split. You can see we actually have a very strong Andalusia here. The Reconquista has not fired. And of course, by this time in history, the Reconquista was still in the stages of trying to push the Muslims out of Iberia. This isn't like base game 1444 U4, where they only exist in provinces, the Muslims, that is. Instead, the Iberian kingdoms are still actively fighting the Muslims as you can see here. The nation of Portugal, Galicia, Leon, Castile, and Aragon. Aragon actually is independent, and they have two junior partners. They have Valencia, and they have Majorca, and they actually have a vassal, that being Sardinia. And not only that, you actually have Valencia, who is a EU under Aragon. Castile is just allied to Portugal, as you can see right there. And in the north, we have a lovely Navarre. They are actually two provinces instead of one. How strong and mighty. And and as you can see, they are allied with the English, which is very interesting. I'll be honest with you guys, I'm really not too familiar with the whole historical aspect of this mod. Of course, I know who Frederick Barbarossa was and things like that. However, I'm really not too familiar. So do let me know in the comments down below the things that you like the most about this mod. Going over to France, as you can see, things are quite different. You, of course, have the lovely Kingdom of France, but France itself is actually split up tremendously. You have, of course, the Apanage vassals that we have in the base game and you have some other ones as well. However, as you can see in the south and a lot of these other ones right here, they're actually independent. So as you can see, Aquitaine is independent. Toulouse is completely independent, ruled by Henry of Toulouse. Provence is completely independent, of course. This one over here is an Apanage. But as you can see, a majority of these nations are independent. Montferrat is independent here, and so is Blois, although they are allied with France. Burgundy is also independent as well, and so is Champagne. So as you can see, things here are quite a bit different. The cultures by by the way, for both Iberia and France are relatively the same, although you do have some new ones here, such as this culture here, which is quite interesting. I've never actually heard of this culture. You have Aquitanian and things like that. And the culture groupings are relatively the same. You have Breton, of course, group, French group. However, going back to Iberia, as I forgot to mention, you have Andalusian here, but then you also have Andalusi or Andalusi or whatever it's called, which is separate than the Andalusian. So as you can see, Andalusia has both Andalusian and and then this one here in the core lands, in the core Sunni lands, although these are also Sunni as well. And as you can see, the ruler is actually Andalusian. He is not this culture down here. And this culture, there's an important distinction to make, is actually grouped with the various North African cultures, at least some of the North African cultures, namely Moroccan and this one over here, Tunisian. However, Andalusian is with the Christian, largely Christian, Iberian culture. Going over to Central Europe, namely modern-day Germany, as you can see, well, there is a German. Germany. Germany actually exists and is ruled by Frederick III von Stauffen. As you can see, Frederick Barbarossa, of course, as you know, and as you can see, there's actually a Germany, which is 
really cool to see. I was not expecting there to be a Germany. I do think that this is, I guess, the best way for the mod creators to kind of symbolize how centralized Frederick Barbarossa made the HRE. So instead of there being a proper Holy Roman Empire like there is in the base game, instead there is just a Germany who was actually a Kaiserreich. So they're actually an empire, as you can see here, ruled by Frederick Barbarossa, which is really interesting to see. As far as the religions, of course, all the religions are the same as I showed you before. The cultures are basically the same. They're all kind of grouped together, although you do have some other new cultures here, namely this one right here, Markish. I've never heard of Markish. And you actually have the cultures which disconnected here. You have Russian over here in the same culture group, which is really cool to see. Honestly, I really like the new things that have been added in Germany, especially. I love the inclusion of the modern day Germany. Of course, it doesn't hold all modern day Germany, but you know what I mean? There's an actual Germany. It's not the Holy Roman Empire. It's not Austria being the emperor. It's not Styria being the emperor. It's not anyone, you know, Bohemia. It's Austria. It's not Austria. Germany. It's actually Germany, which is really cool to see. And as you can see, we have some other nations right here. We have Franconia, who do exist in the base game, although they're much bigger in this mod. You have Engern, which is another tad that I never heard about. You have Eastphalia, not Westphalia. No, 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 no. We don't have that Westphalia here. We can't get Westphalia at the store. Instead, we have Eastphalia, as you can see right here, which is really cool. I've actually never heard of Eastphalia. That actually makes me laugh. It's very funny. And you have Westphalia over here, the two competitions. As you can see, Westphalia sporting the lovely Krakow-like flag, along with West and Eastphalia. We actually have Osterland, which is really nice to see. You have, of course, the lovely Lusitania and all these other nations here, which some do exist in the base game 1444, although some just only exist as tags. And you have some other nations around here, namely you have Corinthia, you have Syria, which is existing. They are actually a EU of Austria, and you have Tyrol and some of these other nations here. All in all, a very, very well-rounded Germany, as you can see here. And although there is a Germany, Germany does not hold all of Germany, which I find to be really interesting, but also really cool. Going over further east, namely into Poland and Russia and the modern-day Ukraine, things here are quite a bit different. This is where things start to differ from not only the base game of EU4, but also just from some historical accuracy as well. As you can see, the nations here are quite different. There is a Poland, as you can see here. They're missing most of Poland like they do in the base game of EU4. Instead, you have the lovely Krakow, or is it Westphalia? Hmm, interesting. But anyway, as you can see, you have Krakow right here, and they are actually in the area where most of Poland is in the base game of EU4 in 1444. And of course, we do have Poland here who are ruled by the PS, but they don't actually hold most of Poland. As you can see Krakow is actually completely independent. You have Galicia Volhynia, who is actually a PU under Poland, which is really cool. You have Warsaw here, who is a vassal of Poland. Let's go ahead and look at the Polish Diplo relations, as you can see here. They actually have some vassals and some PUs, and they have cores on all of Krakow, as well as all of this nation right here. As far as the cultures go, the culture groupings are quite nice here. I do like how they have stayed quite accurate. However, going up further east, this is where things really, really start to change, namely with the religions. The religions in Poland are pretty much the same. However, if you go further east, you, of course, have the orthodox provinces that we know and love, but you actually start to have pagans. So as you can see, we actually have the Romuva religion, which as you can see here actually has a few nations which actually follow it, namely this nation here called Herland, which gives minus 0.2% monthly war exhaustion and plus two tolerance of heathens if you follow the remove faith which is well there are some other removal ones here namely lithuania as you can see lithuania is not christian they are not catholic instead they are removal which is always lovely to see i absolutely love when mods add new religions. I'm sure you all have figured that out by now. I love when mods add new religions as it allows for more flavor in the game and can also allow you to potentially convert over to that religion. Going over to Estonia, as you can see, there is no Catholic or Christian Estonia. Instead, we are this religion right here that I don't know how to pronounce, which gives plus one tolerance of heretics and plus 10 for defense. I absolutely love their little icon here, the little, I guess, moose or reindeer icon. Very, very nice to see. It's very, very adorable. And going 
even further east, as you can see here, things are, well, very, very different. Namely, we have a massive Novgorod. And of course, they are a republic like they're in the base game, but they are much smaller than Muscovy. As you can see, Muscovy is actually a protectorate under the White Horde, namely that they are kind of like a tributary like they were in real life. And this does, I think, a relatively decent job in trying to show how the tributary thing worked. Doesn't necessarily do it exactly like it does with the other nations in E4, like it does in the base game where you just have to pay a set amount per year. However, I think this mod does a pretty good job, nevertheless, in illustrating the whole tributary system, namely Muscovy becoming a protectorate under the White Horde. And speaking of the White Horde, as you can see, looking at the religions here, you have, of course, some more pagans. You have this pagan religion up here in Ingria. As you can see, Ingria is actually Orthodox and a vassal of Novgorod. However, they are a majority pagan nation, with most of their provinces being pagan, as you can see here. Along with that, as you can see, the White Horde is Sunni, and so is Ostrakhan. We would expect Crimea and the White Horde and all these to be Sunni, like they're in the base game. However, you not only have more of these pagan religions, the Ukomensko religion, you also have some of these other religions. You namely have a Tangri province. So as you can see here, this protectorate of the White Horde is actually Tangri, and they are a chiefdom, which is really cool to see. Again, I love when the religions get messed with in EU4 mods. I think it really adds a lot of flavor. Going back over west to Scandinavia, as you can see, we just covered Ingria, but we also have Finland, who are Catholic and actually a vassal of Sweden. We have the lovely Sotmi people, who are actually follow of, who are actually followers of this religion here, which we covered, namely in the other parts of Europe around here in modern day Lithuania, Poland, and Estonia. As you can see, then we have Norway, who are actually in independent and you have Skonia who are also independent and of course we have lovely Denmark here as far as the cultures go it is a bit different as you can see we have Gatish right here we have a Skonian and we have a Norwegian they're all grouped into one you also have this culture here Trondish which I've actually never seen before I've actually never heard of this culture group or it is in the culture group Nordic however it is not accepted in Norway which is really interesting to see however it is in the same culture as you can see they did a great job in grouping Sotmi with the other Uralic people here as they were historically Uralic people. The Sotmi, the Finnish, the Karelians, the Estonians, and the Ingrians. Really, really cool to see. I love when they add historical accuracy like this. Although this is an old history mod, it still is based on real history. And I absolutely love when the mod creators combine great elements of alt history as well as real history. As far as the cultures go in Russia and in the modern day Ukraine and Central Asia, as you can see, see here. It is relatively the same in terms of grouping. However, you do have some other cultures that I've never heard of, namely this culture right here, the Bulkar, and you also have some of these here. You have the Mordivian and their own little culture group. I guess these guys are part of the Yalik group as well, which is interesting. You have the Mahri, you have these guys right here. Again, I don't really understand historically where these people come from. I don't really know much about this, if I'm being honest. So do let me know in the comments down below if you know who some of these people are because I definitely like reading your comments especially about history. Going over to Italy as you can see things are very different here and of course you can notice that there are a lot more tags here as you can have Genoa we have this one right here Novara we basically don't have a Venice here or anything like that we do have a Florence although they don't have a coastline however one of the greatest things here is a Sicily which is actually a junior partner under Germany see so yeah, I didn't even notice that until now however one of the most interesting things here besides the Sicily the Rome, as you can see here, Rome exists, of course, as we know. However, Rome is not ruled by the papacy. Instead, they are actually, I guess, a republic. They're a metropolis, although they are still Catholic, so they're not Orthodox. And that's really cool to see. I do like how they arranged this. We also have Sardinia, who's a BU under Aragon. I might have mentioned that already. And we have Corsica, who is also owned by Genoa. In North Africa, things are very different here. We, of course, have our lovely Morocco, our Lissus, who is actually independent. Yay for the independent Sus. And we have Tafilaut, who is independent as well. Probably 
quite rich because of the gold mine. Going further east, we of course have Tlemcen. We have this one right here. And I mentioned at the beginning of the game, we actually have Carthage in North Africa, who is Catholic. As you can see here, they are Catholic. And you have an Abadi nation, Mazam, which actually exists in the base game, as well as Mazan and some of these other little African nations, namely Jared. Going to Arabia, as you can see, things here are relatively the same. The tags are the same. However, as you can see, they are actually a little bit more intact. So we actually have an intact Yemen who isn't missing one of their cores like they are in the base game. We have a more concise, I guess, Arabia, and we actually have a Hormuz and an Oman together, as well as a Hadrim. Going over to Persia, as you can see here for the religions, we of course have a few more Zoroastrian provinces, which makes sense as is further back time. This is almost a hundred years before the start date of 1444 in basic wars, so that makes sense. We have more Zoroastrian provinces, namely a Zoroastrian province here along the Caspian Sea, which is really interesting to see here. As well as the tags, we actually have some other tags here. The, we actually have Abbasids here. We have this one right here. They're actually Shia. We have Khorasan. We have this one right here. No Timurids. Do keep that in mind. We have Herat. A lot of these guys are relatively the same for the religion, namely being Shia. As the cultures go, and I think I did cover some of the cultures here in North Africa. The cultures look like in North Africa. As you can see, the grouping is the same. This is what the cultures look like in Arabia. However, this is what the cultures look like in Persia. You do have some other culture. You namely have this one, which I don't even know if this is in the base game, to be honest. I'm not too familiar with how the cultures work in Persia. I'm sure I've said this numerous times. You actually have Mashriki, who's grouped with these cultures here. Really nice. Going over to India, of course, things here are relatively recognizable. However, as you know, it is almost 100 years before 1444. So, of course, the tags are going to be a little bit different. Namely, Bahmanis is quite a bit smaller. Save for Vigianigar. Vigianigar is also quite a bit smaller as you know in base game e4 the two most powerful players in india at the moment are going to be bahmanis and vijayanagar it typically is a long slog and bloody war to determine who will reign supreme whether it's bahmanis or vijayanagar and typically while they're fighting someone in the north will rise such as a bengal however as you can see there is no bengal instead it looks like the biggest nation is actually probably going to be delhi as tends to happen even in the base game quickly delhi will collapse but then they'll come back as either someone else or sometimes they'll even have a big jean Pour or a megwar as far as the religions go we of course have a majority hindu india ruled over by shia and sunni muslims and of course we have the lovely Zoroastrian province right there like we have in the base game. As far as the cultures go, it looks like things here are relatively the same. I'm not super familiar with the cultures. The culture groupings are good. Of course, you have them all grouped in the same parts of India like they are in the base game. Going over to Southeast Asia, they really didn't change a ton of these tags. I'm not really going to go over this. As far as the religions go, of course, we have the Hindu. We do have some more Theravada provinces as well as some of the Animus provinces like you'd expect. We also do have some Sunni provinces here, which is really cool however i do want to focus on thailand and vietnam and places like that as you can see we have our ayutthaya here and they are all buddhist for the most part with a few animist provinces scattered beneath however one of the places that i really did want to show you is china so there is an emperor of china this guy here is the emperor of china so the yuan is an emperor of china it's not the ming however we do have the ming they are just really really small and they're actually at war with the yuan and this is basically how it looks you have the yuan basically owning all of china these guys are really 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 scary. I actually imagine these guys probably are even more powerful. If we let the game run, these guys would probably get close to 100k troops very, very quickly, assuming there's nothing stopping their force limit. And these guys are actually Buddhist, which is really interesting. I didn't actually know that these guys were Buddhist. I thought they were going to be Tangri. However, when I was looking at the map and I showed you guys, it's mostly Buddhist controlling Confucian, Animus, and Tangri provinces of the few Sunni provinces, and even some Nestorian provinces sprinkled in there as well. This is really cool. Definitely, if I was to play this mod, I'd probably play the yuan just because these guys start out really powerful although i will have to say they are not nomadic which is interesting i would have thought that these guys would be nomadic however it looks like they're in the chinese tech group which is really interesting to see i wonder if the mod devs did that on purpose or if that's an oversight let me know in the comments below if you know and going even further east as you can see here there is this little guy here well not really little i guess bigger guy they're actually a vassal of the yuan quite a big vassal really nice to see you of course have 
Korea who are also Buddhist. And as you can see here, I already showed the religions, but I'll show it again, especially Korea. It is mostly Buddhist. As the cultures go, it is relatively the same culture grouping. I really will look at the culture grouping for stuff like this here as I don't know the cultures right off the top of my head, unfortunately. However, looking at Japan going even further east, these guys are still Shinto Buddhist here. I've seen some mods where they might change it to some other kind of Buddhism. However, the mod creators in 1356 have decided to change Shinto, which is really neat. And going over to Siberia, as you can see, you really have some of the Siberian tribes, although it looks like a lot of the Siberian tribes over here are missing. And by having some of the Siberian tribes, I mean, of course, these guys here, Sibir, Blue Horde, and all that. However, these far, far eastern Siberian tribes appear to be missing. I wonder if they'll appear in the later part of the mod, or they were just excluded outright. Really interesting. Honestly, if I had to rate this mod, I am going to rate this mod a 10 out of 10. This mod just adds so much, and the mod creators have been working on this mod diligently, and they've actually done the due diligence to make sure that this mod actually works in 1.35 domination, which is really cool. There are so many mods out there that don't work in 1.35. However, this is not one of them. This mod works brilliantly in 1.35. It runs pretty well, although I do have a pretty good PC. So if you do have not a very good PC, you might not run as smoothly as mine. However, I have noticed that it does run pretty well. It's not like Voltaire's Nightmare or anything, at least not at this point in the game. And I definitely do like how they have added the various other religions, namely Nestorian, how they have changed the cultures, but most importantly, how they have included the tags and have kind of portrayed Germany as being centralized under Frederick Barbarossa. So all in all, a really cool mod, definitely a 10 out of 10. This has been a mod review for the mod called 13. 56. But before you go, don't forget to click the link down in the description, of course, to subscribe if you haven't already, but also make sure you join the Discord. The Discord is a really nice place to hang out with other fellow EU4 players, as well as other Paradox game players. Maybe you don't like EU4, like Hoi4, maybe you like CK2. We have all of that in the Discord, and it is one of the best places to chat with me personally. So make sure you join the Discord and subscribe channel. But for now, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.